Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway is a brand new dark ride that uses state-of-the-art trackless dark ride vehicles and cutting-edge projection mapping and technology to pull riders into the world of Mickey and Friends. Through this technology and storytelling, riders will step into the cartoons and embark on a peaceful ride around the park where absolutely nothing will go wrong. The End while the ride took Imagineers longer than expected due to other work going on with Star Wars Rise of the Resistance, for which a How It Works video can be found on the iCard above, the ride has been an overwhelming success with wait times posted at up to 300 minutes. Runaway Railway is the latest investment to make Disney's Hollywood Studios a full day park and coming soon to Disneyland's Toontown. This video is extremely spoiler heavy, so this is your warning for those looking to ride spoiler free. However, if you love theme park technology and want to see how they pulled it off, then you're in the right place. So make sure to subscribe down below and stick around to the end for a contest. In this video, we'll take a look at the technology of the ride including the track, location system, vehicle design, special effects, and more, as well as the history of the ride. So sit back, relax, or stand in a queue line, which you're probably already doing, because this is how Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway works. Runaway Railway was the heavily anticipated replacement and successor to the famous Great Movie Ride that opened with Disney's Hollywood Studios in 1989. The Great Movie Ride was a showcase of legendary movies featuring countless animatronics and live skits acted out by your tour guide. Shortly after the Great Movie Ride closed, Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway was announced to replace the Great Movie Ride and went open in late 2019. As we'll later learn, that never happened as the group working on the new ride was needed elsewhere. Soon after the Great Movie Ride closed its doors, the demolition began by ripping out every last bit of the set structure. When finished, workers were left with the queue which had been spared from the demolition and a large open show building that now could be used to build up the ride. However, due to the complications of Rise of Resistance, more help was needed to assist that ride in construction, so construction of a runaway railway was put off until Rise of Resistance was nearly completed. In order to form the new ride, the former large screening room and the queue was divided into two smaller screen rooms that then led into the loading station platform. This allowed for ride operations to organize riders into large groups that could be led into the theater. Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway is a trackless dark ride that utilizes blended projection mapping and moving projection surfaces to create depth within the otherwise two-dimensional world. Through extremely clever effects, this ride is able to convince riders that they are being pulled into the world of Mickey and Minnie to take a tour through their classic chaotic cartoon world. Riders make their way through the queue and into the pre-show where they are met with the effects to pull them in and immerse them in this Mickey short space experience. These are how those effects work. In the pre-show, guests are herded into a screening room as they are there to see the premiere of a new Mickey and Minnie short. To increase capacity, there are actually two rooms which allows for a steady flow of guests in and out of the pre-show. The lights dim and the show begins as Mickey and Minnie head out for a picnic in the park. As they drive over a bump, a blueberry pie lodges itself in the smokestack of Goofy's train, causing a large explosion. At this point, the screen explodes, sending smoke into the theater. When it clears, it's revealed that a hole has been blown clear through the screen and into the cartoon world. This effect is actually rather simple in principle. The screen in the theater is not one large piece with black borders, as a movie screen usually is, but is actually several pieces. The white part of the screen is actually longer or taller than it appears, with the black borders hiding the damaged section on the bottom of the screen. The bottom black border is split down the middle to conceal more damage to the screen's border and opening for the guests. During the explosion, the white screen rises up so that the hole from the explosion is revealed and allows smoke to cover what's going on. This smoke, the even shade of white on the screen, and the distraction projection of the film is enough to make it hard to notice that the hole didn't appear from nowhere. 
If the projection and smoke were turned off, you'd see the damaged section rise from the bottom of the screen and the bottom section of the border pull away from the center to reveal the opening through which guests enter the cartoon world of Mickey and Minnie. For added effect, the flaps on the screen remaining from the damage flip out towards the guests. These flaps are actually much thicker than they appear, which conceals linear servos or some kind of mechanism built into the screen to push on the back side of the screen to cause the flaps to curl. These vehicles are custom Roush trackless dark ride vehicles. Roush is a dark ride equipment manufacturer and has provided vehicles for Disney for rides like Rise of the Resistance. These custom vehicles don't feature motion base which allows them to move faster through the ride and makes the experience more thrilling and boosts capacity than other slower vehicles. During the loading process, the vehicles are receiving their ride path from the RCS, which it will then execute. Unlike the typical wire-guided method seen on other trackless systems, these ride vehicles use an RFID puck system plus Wi-Fi to understand where in the building it is. These pucks respond to the vehicle by relaying relative position data that it could then use. This is often referred to as an LPS or local positioning system. In addition, the ride adds a locomotive car to the front of the four car group where Goofy is presented to the riders as the conductor of the train. Oh great, this can't go wrong at all. This additional vehicle seats no riders and only contains the effect that shows Goofy, which we will talk about later, and a real whistle for the train and various moving pieces such as a swinging belt and moving locomotive wheels. These vehicles where riders sit have a simple lap bar restraint system which means it has no height requirement, sound, and seat vibration. To power each vehicle, Disney employs a rapid charging battery system. You might notice that these vehicles are always positioned in the same way each time during boarding that always line up with the eights. They're positioned this way because underneath each vehicle is a charging pad they've aligned with to charge. At the end of the ride, the vehicles also dock again and charge while guests unload. When dispatched, the train proceeds forward into Runamark Park where we are greeted with rolling hills and flowers. Here we see the first of many projection map scenes where Disney has taken control of the environment we see. This is something you might call a normalized reality, where because you don't see any real world objects during the ride or light sources, we see the cartoon palette of coloring to be normal. Here any moving detail is projected or actuated by motors or some kind of actuator. Any other details or parts of the set that are stationary are either painted on a surface or built out in a cartoon style and painted with black light paint designed to match the colors being projected. If the projectors were off, you'd see a white spot or grading area where there would be characters or moving details being projected surrounded by the rest of the scene. The projectors are 4K Panasonic projectors located far above you in the rafters. These short throw projectors are designed to project onto nearby surfaces as opposed to being directly across from the surface they're projecting onto, which is not always an option. They're hidden in the booth in the rafters surrounded by black surfaces to hide them as much as possible, but if you look up you might be able to make them out. This set is about 20% projected and about 80% practical or painted. We then move into the tunnel where Mickey and Minnie meet us in their car, accidentally hitting the track switch. Here, Mickey and Minnie animatronics are composed of frosted spherical globes with internal projected faces thanks to a Sony projector inside. Each head is individually actuated and rides in a car that is cantilevered out from behind the wall. During a recent breakdown, we are able to see that the car containing the two animatronics resets backwards into the maintenance room where equipment also exists to lift the system out if maintenance is needed. Now that the train has become a runaway train, the goofy front car takes a left into a bypass room where the other four cars take a right into the western scene. In this scene, the car is able to move freely around demonstrating their trackless technology. This scene consists of cartoon rock work with Mickey, Minnie, and Pluto projected onto the back walls of the room along with matching projected rocks. The projections are again all color matched with the rock work to blend it all together, while the surfaces are technically white. This set is about 50% projected and 50% practical and painted. The cars then move into the next room, the carnival scene. Here two Mickey and Minnie animatronics are swung out on a pendulum rig made to look like a bunch of balloons. Because of the projectors and blacklight paint, they are able to blend the projected scenes in with the static backlight sets seamlessly along with moving props like flags and popcorn buckets. The background is projected and the foreground is mostly practical. Here there's an interesting effect that we saw earlier with Goofy. When you pass Donald in the stand, you might notice that his cartoon looks very real and very convincing and when you pass it, the background moves as well. 
But how were they able to make a vivid cartoon appear like that while also not being projected on a surface like the rest of the ride? Originally, the effect was believed to be a fine mesh cloth similar to the one seen in Mystic Manor being projected onto. However, for this effect to work, you would need to be able to project black to create certain features of a cartoon character. If you show black through a projector onto the fine mesh cloth, you would simply see right through the character in those areas and the effect would simply not work. While we don't know if this is 100% correct, this is our best guess as to how the effect is taking place. The majority of televisions and laptops on the market today are LCD displays. They work by having a backlight for which the LCD panel will block with certain crystals to create the image you see on it. What you may not know is that these LCD display panels without the backlight are actually transparent with the liquid crystal sandwiched between glass. These liquid crystals can carefully control how much light they let through. What we believe they've done is taken a large LCD TV and removed everything but the display panel itself and placed it in that window. Now that the display no longer has a backlight, we can see right through it if the display believes it's showing white and cannot see through it if the display believes it's showing black. Behind the panel is a practical set that is illuminated to give depth to the effect. Now that we have the ability to show colors including black, we now need to show white as well because parts of Donald are white. But if we don't have a backlight, we can't show white. Here we believe that they are using another projector to create a dynamic backlight for the display. The projector is facing the rear of the display panel and projecting a white silhouette to shine light only through the area that the character occupies. The tip-off was that in Goofy's appearance in the window of the locomotive, light shines up at an angle and not out, leading to the conclusion that there's actually a light source of some kind coming from behind and below the animation. To simplify, there's a clear LCD panel in front of a practical set with a projector shining a white silhouette onto the panel from behind to light the LCD since it lacks a backlight. Before moving on to the Twister Room, you might have also noticed a small nod to The Great Movie Ride through a poster in the carnival scene for The Great Moving Ride. The cars now head into the Twister scene, which is another nod to the short-lived Wizard of Oz Twister scene in The Great Movie Ride. This scene is actually one of the only scenes without projections, with the Twister and props being 100% practical. As a bonus, there's also high-speed fans blowing in the room for added effect. The cars don't stop in the twisted room and instead head into the volcano and underwater scene. Here a double use set is utilized to be the rocks at the bottom of the volcano and later the rocks of the ocean. Two more Mickey and Minnie animatronics are perched on a rock hiding behind a bush trying to save guests. The cars each proceed into their own dome screen pod where multiple projectors peek in through the holes in the ceiling to project onto all sides of the dome screen that surrounds the car. After a dive off a waterfall, the cars turn around into the same set now transformed into the depths of the ocean thanks to a quick lighting change and projections. The car then travels down the drain system and into the city where Pete is busy causing havoc. In this scene, a large part of the set is practical and real, but a few sections like the view down the street and the buildings surrounding Pete are projected onto white screens. Pete's animatronic consists of the same internal projection face, a floating hat on his black stick, and spinning rubble pieces as he jackhammers into the ground, as well as his legs flipping out from behind him. There are also various props that shake violently to match the jackhammering. Donald is seen again in the delivery truck using the same effect from earlier with the transparent LCD and projected backlight. This set is about 50% practical sets and 50% projections. The cars then file into Daisy's studio where the cars perform a short dance as the animatronic Daisy directs. This animatronic is a more fleshed out animatronic versus the more cartoonish ones throughout the ride. With a change in music, Daisy's appear behind the mirror through a one-way mirror effect, or infinity mirror. This effect consists of a one-way mirror, an air gap where lights slide in, and another regular mirror. This infinite reflection causes depth that is not actually there. From here, the cars now move into the factory scene that is the result of years of work on Disney's part. As Mickey and Minnie make their way through the factory to shut it down and save guests, their attempts to get to the shutoff are projected onto walls and onto the machinery that is also projected on staggered screens. When they finally pull the shutoff, the entire factory transforms into the park again. 
The screens that were equipment fold up into trees, smokestacks turn into streetlights, the furnace turns into the carousel, and the surrounding buildings turn into the sky. This set is about 80% projected and is the demonstration of the 2.5D effect Disney has been working on where projected surfaces are positioned and used to add depth. Guests are now safe and turn around to be reconnected with the Goofy locomotive that rejoins the group through a bypass it took earlier in the ride and riders toward the rest of the park. We finally see two more internally projected Mickey and Minnie animatronics with a Pluto that also have electronic actuated hands and heads. The park in this finale scene is about 90% practical with only the waterways and fireworks and the internal faces of each character being projected. As an added bonus, there's a barn bird that uses the same transparent LCD effect and adds a projected shadow similar to the one we saw in the holding cell for Rise of the Resistance. The train then heads back into the barn where guests can now unload and head back through the screen and back into the real world. This crazy combination of reality bending projection mapping and clever cartoon augmentation is truly one of a kind. The ride also manages to be relatively high capacity that has helped alleviate the crowds of waiting to ride rides of the resistance. Making a Minnie's Runaway Railway is now open at Disney's Hollywood Studios and will open at Disneyland soon and is truly something you won't want to miss. Altogether, this technology works in unison to create its seamless and thrilling adventure that has amazed and blown away hundreds of thousands, probably now millions of writers, and will continue to do so for decades to come. I hope you've enjoyed this informational dive into the inner workings of Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway. We create these videos to showcase the awe-inspiring technology and engineering that goes into creating the rides we enjoy daily. Thank you for joining us, and we hope you've inspired your curiosity through technology and engineering. Be sure to check out the place of other How This Ride Works videos in the i card above. Some of which you might like, there's a lot of them. We make educational ride models and our social media links are below. Once again, thank you so much for watching and subscribing. Welcome to Coaster Labs, and we'll see you in the parks.